welcome to Path Soundbites IGTV. Keeping new music alive is what I do on the radio and now on video. Conducting live chats with the artists and learning the story behind their latest release and also playing their new video. Special thanks to my good friend Jody Best of Best Bet Promotions for coordinating and scheduling today's artists. Having over 20 plus years in the music industry, if you're looking for a highly successful promotion and marketing professional who's extremely motivated, look no further than Jody Best. For more information, contact Jody via email at bestbedpromo at yahoo.com. Special thanks today to my sponsor, GoGo Tuners. For all guitar players looking for a focus on ease of use, readability, durability, and accuracy, look no further. The GoGo Tuner is the choice of many touring professionals and a favorite of casual players. GoGo's signature green urine and red your out screen makes tuning quick and easy. For more information, go to the website at gogotuners.com. Special thanks to WBXO Classic Rock Radio Redefine, allowing me to keep new music alive on the radio airways on the Pat Show every Sunday from 5 to 8 Eastern Standard Time. Only on WBXO Classic Rock Redefined. And a big thank you to Mr. Evan Balzer for allowing me to use his amazing instrumental that you're hearing right now. It's called Trails. To find out more incredible music by Evan, go to his website at evanbolzer.com. And today's special guest, my good friend from the band In Theory, Tony Cavino and Mike Moster. And they just released this smashing debut hit, Heroes. I'm going to play Heroes. We're going to talk about the band. We're going to talk about the sound of the band and a whole lot more right here on Pat Soundbites IGTV.
Hey, live on Pet Sound Bites IGTV, keeping the music alive on the radio and on video. I got the dynamic cool. Oh, I did. Oh, there he is. That hat, that, that hat is killing me. I got the dynamic duel back. My brothers from their other mother down in the bottom of the frame. The CEO, the visionary, the fascinado, the songwriter, the producer, the real deal. And he's not a Vander Holyfield. And I got to say, he's one hell of a guitar player. And he's a good guy. I don't know, Tony. I, I don't want to get too crazy. Our yeah. man, Mr. Mike Moster. Yeah. yeah, but you know, Patrick says that about everybody. <laughs> no, you yelled at me last time. You said, hey, thanks for the great introduction on the lead-in. Now I take <laughs> care of you, and he's still not happy. And on top, next to me, from the Island of Long, let's go Islanders. The man with the killer pipes, the amazing vocals, the incredible songwriter, weighing in at, I don't know. Our man, rock vocalist, Mr. Tony Cavino. Thank you. What's going on, brother? How are you? How are you, guys? Doing good. We're awesome. Exciting We're times for In Theory. Hell yeah, man. It's, it's kick-ass times for In Theory. It is kick-ass time. You got Absolutely. it. Boom. I mean, we started with the go-go tuner thing, and it took me a while to go, What? And now, ba -ba bam! As I said to Tony before we hit the record button, if I haven't heard, listened to Heroes probably about 20, 25 times, as I said to Mike the first time, is that Tony? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was me. Yeah, I know. One more take, Tony. Just one more. I think well, I'm, I'm not that, feeling it. Just I'm not feeling it, but what? Maybe one more, Tony. I mean, it's okay. You know, just give give me a little bit more. You killed it, Tony. It's never enough. Tony never Tony enough. Will tell you. Never enough for the guy down in Muscle Shoals. But you know what? You guys both killed it, and I am so happy for you. In theory, uh, releasing your smashing debut uh, track, Heroes. I think I want to say it came out last Friday, the twenty eighth. Go buy it. It's on all the digital. Uh, streaming platform, buy it. Don't just try to steal it. As I said to Mike, holy, and I usually don't curse, but I got to say, holy shit. As I had my swampy rock hat on before, <laughs> if this isn't groundbreaking, innovative, unprecedented, as I always try to compare the sound of your the music with something, I couldn't. I couldn't compare it, Tony. I just. I. I. I, I mean, from, from from the beginning all the way to the end. I. I just said to Mike, I called it swamp rock meets soulful blues. Right. Maybe yes. No. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. I mean, when you you get it, I'm saying to myself, how can I describe it? A buddy of mine. I was telling a buddy of mine. I said, how do I describe it? You grab a tablespoon of Zeppelin. You throw in about a teaspoon and a half of Alice in Chains, and then you throw in that little southern down home love funky swampy muscle shoals of Mike, and you hit the mix button, and there's nobody that's got the track of what you guys have created. So I certainly applaud you. There's nothing that I know of that I can go. Well, it's right. Def Leppard. Well, it's. I appreciate that. Yeah, and we and we we are we're consciously going for something that, not necessarily groundbreaking, but something that, um, you know, in a lot of ways that people didn't hear. Like it's familiar, you know. Like yeah, you hear a little Zeppelin. Yeah, you hear a little Soundgarden. You hear a little this, but we wanted to make sure it, it blends. I didn't want to be like, you, where it's taking left turns. Like oh, also we're we're this we're this. It had to be a continuous like thought, you know, and and the music as well. You know, obviously not only lyrically but musically as well. And it all seems to fit whether we're where we make an electric guitar, the dominant instrument also in the very next verse, it's the acoustic, and it doesn't skip a beat. And then when it goes into like the bridges and it's almost like a a nine inch nails octave part, and we 
We take out the live drums for a minute. We add a techno drums and we add a gospel choir. It gets Tony's like kick ass vocals. It's like, it's not supposed to really make sense, but it makes sense. And it's a, it's a continuity to it. And, and like I said, I think like the song was just like a perfect recipe. You know, it's just, like you said, two teaspoons, two, two, two speed, teaspoons of Zeppelin, one of you know, Soundgarden, a little bit of Muscle Shoals, a little bit of, you know, maybe Stone Temple Pilots and, um, you know, a little bit of, of uh, audio slave, just enough. Because if you, if you go a little bit too far, it, it, you, it, it doesn't have it anymore. And the same thing with, you know, with Tony's vocals. If he goes a little bit too far, also now it's like an 80s metal track or, you know, or, um, you know, and, and, it's, and it's something that, and I was very conscious of it. And Tony knows how deliberate I was that I wanted to do something that was fresh. Like, you know, and, and, I, and I'm glad that, you know, guys like yourself and then DJs and, yeah. and um, you know, people in the industry just really recognize what we were trying to accomplish and, and it came through. You know, it's one thing trying to accomplish it. It's another thing for to actually, uh, for people to recognize it. Well, no doubt about it. And it's a little bit not fair to my listeners or the folks that are going to view this because we talk constantly, Mike. So I haven't, we, you, me and you have an advantage of knowing a lot about the song. But for the folks that don't know, when you add Tony's, Tony's voice with Lanisha Latimer, the, the, the amazing Alicia, uh, uh, Lanisha Latimer from the Stevie Wonder and Jennifer Lopez uh, uh touring group i mean oh my god her voice their voices matched up so well in the harmonies was like just just even in the beginning you know that sci-fi i'm like am i starting a space invaders game or an asteroid and then tony comes in and this rocket ship just about takes off in your face and then you throw in your guitar riffs and then what's really, I, I'm going to have to curse, what's really fucked me up was, who are your heroes and do they lie? And I'm like, what? Heroes and liars? Where the fuck did that come from? Because it really gets your attention as a listener. It's so um, unorthodox, but it just, that song, the more I listen to it, I'm like, if that's not on a soundtrack of uh, uh, the next spider-man or i mean it's so relevant but it's so different and it was spot right. on i mean the more i listen to it and then the hammond b3 comes in and i'll ask you mike to just go over the list of folks so we could acknowledge everybody that contributed to the song i'm aware of clayton ivy and oh my god that guy from you know the supremes the you know every country act and every Thousands of records. Oh, yeah. uh, I think Clayton's probably sold about 400 million records or so, something like that, you know, he, that he's been on. But he's been on everybody, you know, from Aretha to Percy to Sledge to Etta James to you name, like all those country guys. Ronnie yeah, Millsap, I mean, to, uh, Toby Keith. I mean, the list yeah. goes on and on. Uh, right. And, and, and I think that's only partial list that they actually provide. And um, yeah, and he's just like a legend here. And and for him, I think, you know, and, and I tell this experience, you know, what, when I went to record with him, I was expecting, um, I, I was like forewarned, like almost, I think uh, it may have been you had told me a story about maybe was, was, it could have been you about Prince and Prince was walking in a room, but he's got to look down, he can't look at him, you got to be careful. And when I went to record with, with Clayton, you know, I had a choice of a young whiz kid or Clayton and I go, I've heard Clayton. I didn't know anything back. So Clayton sounds like an old school guy. He sounds like he's done stuff. And I wanted one foot in the real old school muscle shoals. Like that was very important. And when I came in, he, I, they were forward. He's going to wear his mask. He's just going to go to the live room and he's not going to say a lot. And, you know, he, and I was like, okay, you know, like, is he going to be okay with getting input? And, and then he was he was yelling at the engineer and the assistant. I mean, he was berating everything, you know. And um, you know, I let him do his thing, but I can see his mind was working. You know, I I can see it every time the track went by, and and he was I, I could tell he was getting more excited, but he was again. Um, I, I appreciate that he he 
he cared enough about the music that he wanted to do it at such a high level. Like he wanted to go in there and kill it. He wasn't there to, to be my friend. He just wanted to kill it. So I, I totally respect that. But as he was doing it, I was looking at him and I finally, I figured out, okay, I got it. So I hit the talk button. I go, Clay, you really need to be a lot more aggressive. Like what you're doing, it's just not aggressive enough. And meanwhile, he's just so aggressive anyway. And then he looks at me with a smile and then he just even got more aggressive. But that fit, you know, the, the material that we're doing. And, um, and again, here was this guy that was sort of, what do you call him? Not, I mean, when he initially came in, like I said, it was Warren, you know, that he wasn't the warm and fuzzy guy, you know, initially. Because maybe we didn't know each other. But when he left the room, the live room, he got done recording. Then he, you know, he took his mask off and he goes, Mike, I finally got to play real music. This is like, we don't get to do this down here. Like, this is so, and then he was, I can't, can we curse on your show? I guess we can. You just, this, I already he goes, did. <laughs> he goes, this was just so fucking cool. And then he took me to another room and he started comparing. He goes like, this is like Deep Purple, like one live. And this is like, you know, like old school. And he was just so excited. He goes, anytime you want me down again, I'm there. Like, you know, we just don't get to do it. And he just, I could tell it was almost like, you know, when you're like the young 16, 17 year old kid playing guitar for the first time and you have that true excitement. He had the true excitement. I mean, he was jumping on that keyboard. He was, you know, and when we, and when we did Heroes, um, he, he left the control room and he walked into the room because that was the second session. And he was so, he was just such a different guy that time. And he was, this time he came in, he was talking about his boat and he's fishing. And we talked 90 minutes before we even did the session. And then after we got done, it was his tracks he was singing heroes up on the top of his lungs and here's the guy who's probably recorded what four thousand records five thousand records he's been doing it since the late 60s and he's just screaming he's, he's trying to do his best tony that he could do Who are you? i mean he's just going for it and that to me is like yeah we we hit it out of the park to move this guy we hit it out of the park yeah. you know and he and, he, and the funny thing is he kept thinking like um, I think a lot, of, here, here's the funny thing, a lot of people down in Muscle Shoals, seems, they seem to think I'm a, um, a more in the movie or film industry than in the music industry. Oh, we know you and, are, but we won't tell anybody that. Yeah, well, th that's, that's my other movie in Russia that I did, you know, but, um, <laughs> but it's, it's just a funny thing because there's been a few occasions, and I mean, this was another occasion where he's like, who's that singer guy? Like, it's almost like, I'm like this movie star guy who's putting a project together. It's like, he kept thinking Tony was this real famous singer. I go, no, he's just, he's my buddy from, you know, from New York and we're working on this new project. And I'm trying to explain, no, he, he's not famous. He goes, no, he's, I know that guy. He's like, <laughs> I've worked with him. And, and he, and he insisted that he's, he's worked with Tony and, and he's comparing him to some acts that, that he worked with in, in the early seventies on some rock stuff when there was like an original version of Toto, but he keeps like, who is this guy? And he took it one step further where he did a video to Tony, like a tribute to Tony. And imagine this, a lead, he did a tribute to Tony. Mm -hmm. He says, look, Tony, we're trying to figure out if you sound like this guy or this guy or this guy. He goes, all I know, Tony, is that you kick ass and that's all you need to know. And so for the legend to say that to Tony was, I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, that was, that was incredible. Absolutely. And I said to Tony before, you know, can't find my way. She's gone. I mean, not that he's got the vocals. He's always had the talent. And those songs kicked ass. But for me, the single, is that Tony? Because he went to another level. You catapulted. I don't know where you got. I mean, I don't know if he's sending you the steak and the Jack Daniels from show up to you. I know he's sending you videos because I got a copy of one too. But if that didn't, if that alone didn't inspire you while you were in your closet screaming your lugs out, but dude, well, I mean, uh, well, we, yeah, well, we well we did it when we initially said, you know, let's let's do this, let's do the next round of songs. Uh, we we said we don't want to just do another round of songs. We 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 want to be, you know, we want to be the best version we can be. We want to be up there with the with the greats. And it might sound conceited, but that's just where, where our head was. We want to be on par with all these great bands. 
And uh, there was no, uh, we want to put out songs that our friends like and it's cool. No, we wanted to, we wanted to go places we haven't gone before. And we were excited about it. And there was plenty of things that I did that Mike's like, no, nah, man, you could do better. You can do better. We just kept pushing each other and uh, we kept, you know, striving for greatness. And, uh, you know, the, the, we really wanted the emotion to come out in the songs. I think that's more than anything. Uh, it's like old school Zeppelin, you know, bands like that, old school Deep Purple. You know, it's all emotion, it's, it's, it's vocals. It's not perfection, but it's great rock and roll music. Um, and that's that's what we were striving for. We really uh, we really pushed each other. Oh, dude, dude, you catapulted into a whole different level. It's powerful, emotional. It's edgy. you you know the the groans are, are deeper. The screams are wider. I mean, I again, I knew it was you, but it didn't sound like you from the first two songs. And I said, holy crap, man. No, you, I, and to hear that legend, to hear Clayton do that for you, if nobody, people need to know your name, buddy, before the end of the year, dude, I got, I'll say that, and if this song doesn't chart, because I know I'll play it every goddamn week, it needs to be Thank played you. every week, I was so happy to see Ron Keel grabbed it, and yeah. put it on his show, and we got to get that snowball effect going. But, uh, yeah, Ron's been a good brother, you know, I mean, I was actually surprised that, um, I, I just sent Ron the track, you know, pro, you know, maybe three or four days prior. And I, I didn't know when he was going to get to it. And Ron and I didn't even have a discussion. I just sent them, here's the a little background of the song. <clears throat> and here's, here's the MP3. Because he's, he's been a big supporter of the whole go-go thing and, and anything hard rock that we've been doing. And so he, I didn't know if he was going to, when he was going to play it. Uh, and the fact that he, he played it four days after, I sent it to him and we were the lead single on his show. Yeah. Which was, I think just again, a testament that he really liked it. And he said, then after he, he aired it, he sent me a really nice message. He goes, yeah, you guys just killed it. You, you know, so I, I think we did something right. No, you, you, you definitely did something right. And I, I, I said, I used the word groundbreaking, but it was certainly, I mean, the whole go-go record was so diverse and it's kind of in its own groundbreaking, unorthodox way of how you merge the diversity of all those genres. And then this song, I mean, there's no doubt about it. Everybody needs to see it. I know, I think you're working on a lyric video, right? You need to have a, yeah. a video get out and uh, keep that snowball effect going. What's the next step? Is it song number two? It, I mean, is, I know I must have asked you a hundred times. Is it an album or an EP or one song at a time on a release? Well, right now it's going to be one song at a time that will eventually be a full record, you know, but we'll, <clears throat> I think we'll end up first putting out, um, I think about three singles, but the three singles will give us, you know, 90 days or so, you know, um, while people get acclimated to the record. But by that time, I think Tony will, pro Tony and I will probably have a good portion of the almost probably the entire record uh, completed um, because the, we, we already have a lot of the beds done already where I have the, uh, you know, bass and, and, and drums and guitars, the basics all done. So we, we, we really have, you know, a lot of songs that are similar to those in the bank. But I think that, um, you know, it's one thing about 29, we, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves as well. And I think with the first three songs, we, we, we elevate it to, to, this, to a certain level. And now it's like we're on the fourth and fifth song. I'm like, okay, is it that, this level again? You know? So now I'm pushing, can we even get it better? Can we get it better? Or, um, or, or even if it's not better at that level, you know, that, that gives that listener, like, you know, like yourself, when you hear it, like, I want that reaction, whether you know, it's a 15-year-old, or this crazy dude, you know, on WBXO, they call him Murray, you know, um, or, or Clayton, or, or um, you know, or, or Ron Keel, you know, just, I want everybody's reaction to be, holy shit, like, this is cool, this is cool stuff, and without exception, everybody that's heard the first single, that's reaction, holy shit, so if we continue that reaction from every song, then uh, I'd probably be the happiest camper. 
Yeah, and I think Tony said it before. You know, it, it, not, it wasn't even. It, it's the, the fact of if you don't believe in yourself, you know, nobody's going to believe. So if you're going to take it to another level and work your ass off and you know this is the best that we have, well, you know what? Good for you guys. No. I, the, yeah, we certainly did. I, I think Tony and I, and I think, you know, Pat, you, we, we've spoken about the process behind it, but there was many times, you know, where, you know, I, I think Tony, if, if he could, you know, uh, put his hand through the phone and choke me, I think he would have um, more, more than once. But, um, yeah, because, you know, I, I was, you know, we were, we were just really just pushing and pushing and there was going to be, uh, there was going to be no settling, you know, from from you know, from both of us. And even I felt once, you know, Tony achieved a certain level of of, um, of vocals, then you know I put that same pressure on myself as a producer as well. Like, okay, the vocals are here, the guitars are here. Now, as a producer, this thing you know has to be whatever you want to call it, blended right. If you're making where we're talking about the recipe, it has to be produced at that level as well. So, I mean, I was doing a lot of, you know, 18, 20 hour days to get that production right, to get those mixes right. So. Was there any thought of just continuing the end of the song before you cut it off to that? It sounds like a drum, uh, a drum part at the end. I thought listening to it last night and today a few times, I thought it might have could have went just a little bit further, maybe one more time to the chorus. You know what? And we've thought about that. And, and the re you know, honestly, the reason. Because I felt it just, I, not to cut you off, I just, after listening to it enough times, I, I'm like, man, it seems like they almost just found a way to cut it off compared to just letting it go just a little bit longer. But yeah, well, that, 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 was, that was actually deliberate, <laughs> you know, because a lot of times when I do write, <laughs> and I think, ah, you know, it's too short or it should be this. But for me, that what you just said, means I did something right because that means you know what you want to listen to the song over and over and there's a fight there's there actually is a fine line believe it or not um if you go over you know five seconds eight seconds also in that great song you don't want to hear it anymore like it, for some strange reason it changes the like it's it's it just feels like now the song's too long you know now it's almost like no I want to hear it again I want to hear it again like you know I think that's so. What you just said just solidified <laughs> solidified that yeah, I, we did cut it off at the right time. I mean, I, I maybe I dig too much. I'm thinking, I'm listening to every instrument. I mean, at one point, I, I told you guys of when last time we talked a hundred times is I love songs that almost stop, and at one point you guys almost stop, and then it's not like Tony switched mics. It was like a mic chain because his voice was a little, it, it had a little bit of a, I forgot, I thought I wrote it down in my notes on what line you were singing, Tony, but it sounded like a mic change and I can't find it in my notes right away, but it sounded just a little bit different. Uh, the song Relevant, um, Who Are Your Heroes and Do They Lie? It's like, who says that? I'm like, what? Talk about a knuckleball. Are you the one? Maybe it was that. The point of Are You the One? There was like a change. I don't know if it was a mic change or just there's no, so was, it, much. I mean, there's, there's a actually, it's more of a preamp change, not a mic change. Okay. And um, the, the preamps are technically what they were, but there's, there's a famous picture of, um, of Jimi Hendrix, and he was using these preamps on his vocals on his guitars, on the drums, and there's eight ones that he was using. And the studio that we were recording at, they have two of the original ones from Hendrix. And that's what we're running Tony's vocals through. Like, wow. From, from the legendary, yeah, I mean, the original ones that Jimi Hendrix used, yeah. So. I don't know. So Tony's again, that was a very conscious thing from a production standpoint. Like, even each verse is like, okay, let's use this preamp or this one we're going to run it through the the bomb shelter and this one we're going to run through you know through this and this and this um i mean again every single line was was so magnified you know um like i said when you, it, it was everything was just magnified i mean even like i said when we're doing those 18 hour days and we're to get line by line and i'm glad that actually that you did notice that there was a change because again that was deliberate 
you know, that, that I felt because the guitars were going to this techno feel, you know, and I'm adding this old school, like this octave fuzz thing with the, with the Tom Morello whammy pedal. And we take out the live drums where it's now it sounds like a live drums, but it's a, a techno beat. And we need, we needed a tonality change in the vocals. And, and there it was, because that's what I call And there it was, right? And then you add that versus, you know, 20 Lanisha voices versus, you know, the Soundgarden Tony. And where, where, where else on the planet are you going to hear something like that? Tony, after, after a million takes, I mean, I'm listening to this. I mean, I, I'm sure you're your biggest critic. Um, yeah. Could you have done any more? I mean, you you got to be a hundred percent satisfied with where where you're at with this. The, the, this song as a whole, I'm hundred percent. I mean, if you ask me, could I do it better? I'm always gonna say yeah, but that's just me. I'm, I'm an idiot. But uh, you know, as a singer, you always think you got a better take than you. But the song as a whole, and the way it came together, is no, it's it's done. You know, you can't touch that. So. How the hell are you guys gonna do this live? That's what I want to see. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. You know, I mean, ima imagine, imagine. I, I think it'll be ten times more powerful on the stage, especially if we can get Lanisha to come on tour with us. Uh, that would be amazing. Oh, if you had Clayton and Lanisha, yeah. Oh, and and you opened up for Def Leppard, or there you go, Jody, get on. Jody, open up for Def Leppard, Jody, Jody, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> or or Night Ranger or any of those bands, and you just played yeah. your five songs. It'll be powerful. For six minutes. Yep, it'll be powerful, and I think I think it will catch people off guard. And I agree with Tony. I think uh, I think it'll be even bigger live. You know, because um, you know Tony and I have spoken about it. I've even uh, on my recent trip to California, I spoke to Lanisha about it. You know, yeah, it's going to be really challenging to to bring us out live and she's like no i'm there and i'll help you get the choir as well you know so she'll be the lead choir and then she's got her groups of choirs throughout the united states and um you know and of course you know tony and i were talking about clayton you know no one would expect clayton you know like you know like you know not that he looks like your your grandfather but he, even though he's like 70 he, you know he's 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 not, you know, he's he's a big spunky dude. He has energy. If you take you, me, and Tony together, maybe we'll we'll equal his energy, maybe. And um, but I think people would be surprised, especially if they don't know who he is, and they don't know who the niche is. I think they they may be expecting like, oh yeah, this kick-ass singer and the guitar player is cool. But as a whole, if they hear all that coming at the same time, I think people will be shocked live. I'm thinking it was the, the guy that was in I Can't Find My Way. And then I look up who Clayton is, and I go, that's not the same guy that's playing keys when you guys are doing the video Can't Find right. My Way. Does anybody... Yeah, well, can't Find My Way, it's, it's a little bit more of a gospel. He's, he's a little more of a gospel background you know, type of guy. Is there anybody that you, utilizes the studio more than Mike, Tony? I mean, this guy, 18-hour days trying to find the right balance the right sound the right try this mr open g I, if i've heard that a hundred times from him and that and that martin 12 string martin and you know but that's what makes it i mean whoever thought of jimmy page with a violin bow you know on on a, on a guitar that you get yeah, mike, that you know yeah mike no mike mike uh you know he's uh he was amazing on this like he he, he would call me and be like hey mike, we're gonna we're gonna do this on this part and that part, and we're gonna cut it off here. And you know, there's times I'm just like, dude, what, do, what are you talking about? Like, like he's like all it's all like all these little sketches, and, and I feel like I'm the happy idiot. Like it's like oh, I just want to sing. Like you know, yeah, it's a vocal school. It's all I care about is the vocals. He's like, no, nah, we gotta add a guitar part, and we gotta do this, and we gotta do that. And he's got all this stuff going on in his head, and I don't know where it comes from, you know. He drops the mic, man. He, he kills it. The water, the steak, and uh, a few Must glasses of something down there. I tell you, <laughs> I don't know where he got. I want to know what he what he wants to be when he grows up. That's what I want. 
I, I want to be Patrick Collins. No, you do not want to. All of you. Absolutely not. Well, I. Uh, anyway, well, I think if you, I think if you rock the sombrero hat, and I'll rock my uh, uh, whatever hat this I, is. Yeah. Uh, what's this? <laughs> what's this riff surfer? Where did that come from? <laughs> I did that. I'm I did. like, what the hell is R I riff? I don't riff know. I, I, that was my reaction too. I go, what the hell is that? Oh, because he he, he surfs. And he, and he writes riffs, so I put it together, riff surf. I'm like, yeah. where did that go? I said, we talked about everything, but I'm like, the riff surf. I thought he was going to text me and be like, what the hell are you doing? I, so I, 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 I think I'm now the, uh, the swampy riff surfer is what I am. I don't know. I think riff surf is kind of cool, to be honest with you. That could be a good thing. The riff surfer. Oh, my goodness. Well, you guys have hit it out of the park, <laughs> and I support it, and I certainly love it. And I want to tell everybody it's available on all digital streaming platforms. Go and buy it. You will definitely not be disappointed. Share it on your socials. Go to In Theory Band on the website. Go to In Theory Original on Instagram. I can't wait for the video to come out. You're on Facebook. Yeah. Holy shit, guys. I don't care, Mike. I say groundbreaking. In unprecedented. I can't say state of the art. I'm trying to think. I don't want to steal your buddy's word. Revolutionary, because that was really the word. I'm not going to steal that, guys. But uh, there's nothing like it to be comparable. You guys have a lot to be proud of. I don't know how the hell you keep that bar up that high for four or five more songs, but God bless you. Keep keep having those eggs or those steak and eggs and uh, <laughs> Daniels. Give me young. It's, it's, it's that, that's the secret it. recipe is is the Jack Daniels is you know <laughs> I, I, I I yeah I was gonna say steak Jack Daniels and then you know uh, I'll I'll just leave it at that and then I think you I think you know the rest we'll keep that private I I definitely know the rest and I love the videos for inspiration I know Tony definitely loves them oh, yeah. always pops in at a right time when he's with his family they're all good. <laughs> Next well, I keep telling Tony I'm going to send those videos to his wife, you know, so. He's going to be um, a modeling uh, agency uh, guy. That's, what he, that's what's well, missing. Collecting really, the talent. We're, we're collecting the talent. So absolutely. He needs, you know. Plan B. A little touch of Mike. Just a little touch of Mike. Everybody <laughs> right. wants a little touch of Mike. Mike but, just but they, wants need, they need all their teeth. That's the thing, though. That's well, the that and Mike, teeth are Mike would pay. To sleep for about three days straight. Trust me, he would love to just, but somebody's got to walk the poor dog. Come on. There's a lot of volunteers down there. I know that. <laughs> it, it, it's very interesting. Yes, it is, to say the least. In yes. theory, rock in the world. It got, it's got to happen now. Everybody go out and buy. These guys kick their ass and can't make this up. You're going to freak out when you hear this and you're going to play it like I did about 15 or 20 more times. And we're going to go, where's the next one? Give me the next one. Well, yeah, we, got, we, we got two more ready to go. So I kind of, I kind of, somebody, Santa Claus came early for me, but for my listeners, this is only the beginning. You, you wait to see more of this. In theory, go check these guys out. Brother Tony. Thank you. You rocked it, man. Love you, man. Thank smiling. You Do not. Do not ever think that you are not in the top of the top, brother. Don't Thank ever you. think that. I'll come down to the island and kick your ass. Smack me around. There you go. I'll smack you around. After the islanders <laughs> win the cup. There you Damn. Go. <laughs> Thanks, the man. guy below you, I don't know. I, I, I swear he would do anything to sleep for four hours, but he's uh, – I, I, I don't want to – I don't want to – I can't say – no, he's got a hat on. I can't. I can't. No, he's. I don't know. Where, I don't know where he comes up with this crap or finds the time. But well, at least, at least you're not going to come down here and slap me, so I'm, I'm okay. I just want to be your driver. I just want to be <laughs> the guy to announce you guys. I, I, can I at least do that? You're hired. You're hired. Thank you. So you I think that's how we start off the show: is that you slap Tony. There you then, go. And then you you drive me like on a limo onto the stage. Oh yeah. <laughs> what is and so like, like you know like Rob Halford has I was the gonna say Judas Priest like on a, yeah. on a Harley Davidson. Yeah. Right. 
Give me one of those big Italian goomba slaps to start the show. No, no. And we'll, and we'll both wear hats, Patrick. Okay. Well, Tony's got to – hey, you got to – he's got the bling. He's got the – He's got the swag. He's just missing a hat. I need a hat. I, I, I missed the meeting where we were going to buy a hat. <laughs> you didn't get the memo. That's on the other, the other Zoom chat. Uh, okay. Love you guys. Keep rocking. You, you know where to find me. Love you, Pat. Thank right. you. Thanks for everything, Pat. Thank you, man. Absolutely.